Now, something I get asked about all the time by medical applicants is the best ways to get work experience when you're preparing to apply for medical school. And actually, I think it's really important that we start off this conversation by, by asking why is it so important? The medical applications process seems to have all these different hoops in it that you have to jump through. So why is it that most medical schools seem to place such emphasis on at least a little bit of work experience? And essentially what I think this comes down to is giving you the best chance possible at deciding whether medicine is actually the right career for you. Medicine, for better or worse, is often glamorised by the media and presented as something less challenging and arduous than what it actually is on the ground. It's really glamoured up, essentially, and being able to see what caregiving is like first-hand through direct experience makes a huge change to your perspective, and in my humble opinion, it's the single best thing you can do to decide whether medicine is a suitable career for you or not. And I guess, obviously, it also shows that you're at least outgoing and confident enough to be able to get it in the first place, but more on that later. And for the purposes of this video, I'm going to separate the experience into two distinct types. The first type is going to be shadowing, whether that be with a doctor, a nurse, a social worker, or another health professional. And then secondly, care experiences and volunteering. And this is going to include things like working in a nursing home, being a healthcare assistant, that kind of thing. And both of these types of experience are really important because they can offer the opportunity to shape your perspective in different ways. The first is the chance to see an actual qualified bona fide health professional doing what is expected of them to the standard expected of them and probably beyond that if they're willing to take students for shadowing. And the other, the more voluntary type experiences, they test your own ability to deal with difficult situations when they arise. But unfortunately, as many of you will be intimately aware, actually getting work experience can be one of the most difficult parts of making your med school application. And consequently, that makes it really, really difficult for me to advise anyone on because it not only varies by region, the part of the country that you're in, the trusts that are available around you, even you as a person. All these things have to work together. But I still absolutely recommend you try to get at least one example of the two types of experience we've just talked about and that's going to be what we cover in this video. So firstly, we're going to talk about shadowing again and shadowing for me it really doesn't matter who you are shadowing, you know. I had fantastic experiences with a GP, a psychiatrist, a social worker and a mental health nurse. And for those people on the team who I wasn't able to shadow directly, for example, there was a clinical psychologist and more social workers, I made sure to get the time to sit and chat with them, even if it was just 15 minutes, about their role, how it plays into the team and how the team functions as a whole. It's really important to recognise that any experience is good experience. And the best way, as with most things in life, I think, to get this sort of experience is to go in, go into the trust, find someone on reception and ask them directly. Now, something to be aware of is that there are several types of trust, including acute trusts, uh, ambulance trusts, mental health trusts, there's a huge range. And if you have family or contacts or, you know, anyone on the inside that you can talk to about this, they're going to be a great asset, but don't be deterred if you don't. And again, as with most things, it's going to be very much a case of being tenacious and persistent and not giving up when it gets rough. Go in, state very clearly what you want. You know, I would like some clinical experience. I would like to shadow Dr. X. This is what I want to get out of it. I'm thinking about applying to medical school. Would that be okay? Be courteous, be polite, dress smartly, and there's really no reason they shouldn't say no. Of course, if they do, don't play up, you know, don't, don't get upset or whatever. This is part of the game. Maintain your composure, thank them for their time, and move on. And on that note, actually, some types of trust, and some trusts individually, won't be able to take you for logistical reasons. You know, the NHS is really, really busy, as it always is and there may simply not be the resources in place to allow that kind of experience. And with most of these things, it's going to be no comment on you. They won't turn you away because they don't like you or something, that they've only known you 30 seconds a minute, and they'll try to accommodate you where they can. Sometimes it just won't be possible. In terms of actually finding where to go, um, what I would recommend is looking at the websites of the trusts near you. So if you live near a big hospital, 
look on their website, search for work experience, they probably do have some access to healthcare experience schemes available. And be sure to apply well, well in advance of when you're wanting to apply to medical school because with everything being so busy, with medicine being so popular, you will not be the first person that's looked. There will probably be a waiting list. If there isn't, you've gotten really lucky. But obviously, medical school deadlines require you to have all your volunteering done and evidence submitted by a certain point. Try and do things as early as you can. It really doesn't make any difference. You can't really be too early with these things. And be prepared for things to take time to sort out. It may be a case of come back in a few months you know, when things have gotten quiet. Worst comes to the worst, ask your med student friends, they'll probably know people in the area. Worst comes to the absolute worst, get in contact with me. I'm more than happy to make inquiries on your behalf because I've, you know, I've done it myself, I'm used to the process. If it's absolutely going nowhere for you, I don't mind you getting in touch and asking. So moving on, the second type of experience that we discussed, this kind of caregiving environment, the thing that I found really important and useful about this is that it's less about seeing what the caregiver does. For me, it was more about empathizing with what it means to be a patient. And from my own experience in this area, I volunteered in a, a nursing home for older people with kind of neurodegenerative problems, things like dementia. And things become apparent, you know, from the first hour that, again, talking about the things I saw, there are so many things that I take for granted. Being able to walk, being able to talk, being able to eat, being able to go to the toilet unassisted when I want, being able to think coherently and to remember what my friends and my family, what they even look like, who they are. The things you never normally think about until you're exposed to an environment like that where the people are vulnerable. But if any one of them were impinged, it would affect my quality of life so drastically. and. That's why I think these experiences are so valuable, because it forces you to think about things from a perspective other than your own. And it influences how you interact with people in the future, because I've come into medical school now, I've been on the wards. When I'm interacting with these people with, you know, who've had strokes or they have things like Alzheimer's, what I mean to say is that had I not had that experience, I think I'd certainly interact with them quite differently, and I'm really glad that I did have it. And again, the best way to get this sort of experience, go into the place, go and ask directly, state clearly what you want, and ask if they can accommodate you. I know that sounds really daunting if you've not done it before, but the ability to actually be confident and go and talk to random people and communicate effectively is something that we're all going to need to be good at if we ever want to be competent doctors anyway. So you might as well start practicing now. And there are, of course, many, many ways in which work experience can be approached. If you're ever worried that something you're doing might be a waste of time or not appropriate, email the medical school and ask. You won't make a bad impression or bother them or anything. I think that's something people get hung up on. They won't remember you, you're just a number to them but their job is to make sure that you can maximize your potential and become a great doctor because that's what they want. So just looking at the Warwick Medical School website, which of course is a graduate entry program, so some of the demands and the things they want might be slightly different to undergraduate entry, but they're really not that dissimilar. It lists shadowing and care home assistance, which are two things we've talked about, healthcare assistant, paramedic, physician's assistant, physician's associate, the really key thing is that it's going to be a hands-on experience of either delivering care yourself or seeing how hands-on care is delivered. And I think that is for a good reason. It can be difficult to get those sorts of experiences, but anything else is not going to accurately reflect medicine, unfortunately. And particularly when it comes to that opportunity in that secondary type of experience to deliver the care yourself and know that you've made an active difference to someone's well-being. I mean, what more could you want than that? There's no better feeling. As ever, you should always make sure to visit the websites of the particular schools that you want to apply to because requirements do vary by institution. That's unfortunate, but it's just the way it is. It's an area that very, very much favours the prepared and the tenacious, so persistence is absolutely key. And it's something that is very well worth doing, very well worth putting in the effort to chase after because it'll make you a much better health professional in the long run. So I hope that's been helpful, guys. I will have another video coming soon on how to get the most out of your work experience when you're applying to med school. 
but that's for another time. I hope this has been useful. Thanks very much for watching. Please be sure to hit that like button for me, leave a comment, subscribe, and go and check out my website postgradmedic.com for my daily med school blog and more free advice like this. Take care and I'll see you next time. Bye.